I'm actually going to be speaking for my colleague who uh, unfortunately cannot be here at Family Emergency, Dr. Michael Luna, but he's a rising star in our department, and uh, most of these slides are uh, uh, borrowed from him. So PCI, as you've heard over the course of the, the last day, uh, is going to become more and more challenging. It is already becoming more challenging. We're dealing with older patients, more complex disease, sicker ventricles, uh, and we've got to figure out how to get through these cases. And so what I want to share with you is um, calcification and tortuosity. These are two things we see uh, in uh, coronary anatomy that can really make or break uh, your case. With calcified vessels, this is something that's very common. Um, and uh, it, again, is associated with increasing age. It's seen commonly in patients with renal uh, disease. And as we take on more and more of these patients, we're seeing really heavily calcified vessels. And, and, and those, those uh, uh, calcific vessels do, uh, are associated with poor outcomes. Tortuosity also is not uncommon. And it's something that's associated with long-standing hypertension, advanced age. Uh, and patients tend to have accelerated atherosclerosis at sites of tortuosity. Uh, and so these are two things we're going to have to overcome uh, to be able to uh, improve outcomes uh, uh, of PCI. This is one of several studies that just shows that calcification uh, does complicate uh, outcomes with PCI. Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, another contributor to our uh, just inferior outcomes when compared to uh, bypass surgery. It's generally associated with higher MACE events. Uh, and certainly with uh, higher rates of uh, target vessel revascularizations. So what are some of the acute risks you will see with uh, calcified coronary arteries? Well, uh, they can be failure to cross or even failure to dilate the artery and uh, or the stenosis uh, with a balloon, even with the best balloon possible. Uh, it make, make it uh, impossible uh, to deliver stents uh, even after you've dilated the vessel. There's a risk of dissection, okay, with uh, calcification. Acute perforation uh, as we try and dilate at very high pressures. Um, and even if you're successful, uh, calcific vessels are more prone uh, to, uh, I, I mentioned dissection and acute vessel closure, as well as uh, reinfarction. Long term risks, uh, these are also uh, well known. Uh, calcified vessels uh, limit our, our stent implant, so the stents are not well expanded, they're underexpanded, they may be malopposed, uh, and, uh, uh, and the symmetry of, of expansion is also inhibited. They may also contribute to uh, late recoil of stents that are implanted. All of these will increase the risk of restenosis, increase the risk of re uh, stent thrombosis, and major adverse uh, cardiac events. So. How can we get through calcified vessels? Well, we've, um, uh, there are now several tools that are available for you, and I think the key message here is to try and adopt these early uh, in the course of treatments. So traditionally what we've done when we've encountered calcified vessels is to use high pressure conventional balloon angioplasty. Um, and uh, we're now fairly comfortable with going to pressures of 15, 16, 18 atmospheres of pressure. Uh, but realize that uh, with some calcified vessels, even at pressures higher than that, you're not going to be able to adequately dilate the, the stenosis. And there is a risk. With increase in pressure, there's a risk of coronary perforation. So some additional tools that are available for you, uh, cutting or scoring balloons can help um, uh, with uh, 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 essentially they, they score the calcium or they score the plaque and help facilitate dilation, but the real big advance has been with uh, atherectomy. Orbital atherectomy is another uh, significant advance uh, in this area, which actually gives you larger lumens uh, with a uh, relatively small um, uh, burr. And then laser atherectomy, in a few cases where you are able to cross only with a wire and cannot even exchange, a laser can be used to help modify the plaque or the calcium a little bit to then allow you to <laughs> Uh, exchange and, and do some more uh, work in, in the, at the lesion. So here's a case example of uh, a calcified um, uh, right coronary artery. Uh, and, you know, without, um, at first glance, it would seem that you can easily treat this. 
but as we tried to uh, dilate this vessel, it was clear that we were not getting adequate uh, dilation uh, with very high pressure uh, conventional balloon. And rather than risk uh, uh, further injury to the vessel with dissection and perforation, we moved on to uh, uh, rotational atherectomy here, and that really uh, made the case uh, much easier, and we were able to stent this with a great result. In another case, uh, here's a proximal LAD stenosis. Uh, this was sort of late in the day, uh, and we were just trying to, to get in and get out. It was a patient with a sick ventricle as well. Uh, again, with conventional balloon angioplasty, uh, we were not able to dilate the, 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 the stenosis very effectively. Um, so we went to bigger and bigger balloons with higher and higher pressures, and unfortunately, at uh, 24 atmospheres of pressure, are you able to advance to the next image? It's not happening here. If you click on play on the film, the third film. Oh, sorry, I was gonna show you that. So we dilated further. Yeah, the next one over. There we go. And unfortunately, we ended up with a uh, significant perforation. Uh, luckily, this patient did okay. We were able to implant covered stents in this vessel. Uh, but uh, we could have made things easier by just performing uh, rotational uh, atherectomy or orbital atherectomy at the site. What about tortuosity? This is, again, something we encounter from time to time that can make life difficult uh, in the cath lab. Here is a very tortuous right coronary artery. You're making essentially a 360 degree uh, uh, rotation to get to a, a distal, a mid to distal RCA stenosis here. As we tried to advance a wire here, and we tried several wires, we uh, ran into difficulty, uh, and, and we kept, our guide kept uh, backing up here, as you see. Uh, there are a number of tools that can be adopted to help overcome uh, these type of limitations. You can certainly uh, go to a, a stronger guide, so an Amplatz guide to give you more support. Use microcatheters to help uh, deliver your wire uh, distally or a guide catheter extensor, uh, extension such as Guideziller. Um, in the past, we've used uh, shorter stents, uh, and there are also anchor techniques where you can inflate a balloon either in the proximal vessel or distal vessel to allow you traction. In this case, we're able to advance a guide liner through an Amplatz guide all the way uh, into the first part of the curve here, and then through that, deliver a wire distally and our stent, uh, and eventually we had a good result. So in concluding, uh, calcified and cal uh, torturous vessels are a part of PCI today. And I think if we're going to continue to have success, uh, we really have to be open to the several tools and techniques uh, that are available uh, to help facilitate the su success. Try to adopt uh, these uh, techniques early in the case, uh, and by uh, improving familiarity and, and experience, uh, you should uh, have better outcomes. Thank you.